Now it is my pleasure to introduce our 2022 commencement speaker, Latasha Brown. <laughs> Latasha Brown is the co-founder of the Black Voters Matter Fund and Black Voters Matter Capacity Building Institute. She is a visionary behind a regional network called the Southern Black Girls and Women's Consortium, an award-winning institution builder, cultural activist, and artist. Latasha is a nationally recognized as a go-to expert in black voting rights and voter suppression, as well as black women's empowerment and philanthropy. She has served as an American Democracy Fellow at the Charles Warren Center at Harvard University, and she is now Senior Practice Fellow at the Ash Center for Democratic Governance and Innovation at Harvard's Kennedy's School of Government. Her voice has been described as the nexus between the Civil Rights Movement, the Black Power Movement, and the Black Lives Matter Movement. Pitzer community, please join me in welcoming the 2002 Pitzer College commencement speaker, Latasha Brown. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. What's up, graduates of Pitzer's College? <laughs> I wanted to start with that song because you, my friends, you are the light unto the world in this moment. And I wanted to take the opportunity to celebrate and say, you did it! <laughs> and I know that at the end of the day, that while you were here struggling, doing your work, sometimes not doing your work, you actually made it through, right? Because it was perseverance but you also had support in many different ways. Sometimes it was a friend, sometimes it was that friend that said, get over yourself, come on, we gotta get this done. Sometimes it was your parents or that loved one, and so I wanna take this opportunity, let's thank those that actually surrounded us and supported us in this moment. And before I go forward, I just want to say thank you, President Oliver. Thank you for your work. Thank you for leading this college, but also thank you for 45 years of service and the learning of our people. And I appreciate every single thing that you've done. Thank you. Now, I wanted to start in that space because what I would like to do, I only have 15 minutes and listen, I'm a Southern girl from the South. I can talk. And so what I would like to do is I always start with this exercise and I would like the graduates and those of you in the audience to also join me in this exercise. I'm going to ask you a few questions. And so what I want you to do is I want you to get centered in your seat, get grounded, centered in your seat. Now, don't think about all the good snacks you're going to have or food you're going to have after this graduation. I just need you to literally um, be in this moment. Close your eyes and I'm going to ask you a series of questions. My first question to you is what would America look like without racism? My second question to you is what is the world that you would like to see and to have your children to live in? And three, what would America look like if all human beings felt valued and respect it. Now open your eyes. Now I don't know how many of you all were able to see anything. Anybody was able to see anything? <laughs> and those are challenging questions and part of the reason why I often start with those questions because what I can tell you is that there has never been anything that has been brought into existence in the physical world that was not first envisioned. And so it's really important as we're talking about how we're going to create the kind of world that we want, we've got to envision it. 
that is part of our uh, uh, that is part of our role. Our role is to actually think about having a radical reimagination of the world that we want to see, the world that we want our children to live in, our children's children, those that we love, those that we don't even know. But at the end of the day, how can we create that? And so I know you're sitting there probably like I have in my, when I was your age in a similar circumstance, and you had probably three questions. The first question I had in my mind is, where do I go from here? I'm like, okay, I know what I've been doing the last three, four, five years, but what do I do next? The second question for me was, what is my purpose? What is it that I have to contribute? Where will I work? What will I do? And the third question for me is, how am I going to get paid? Who is going to write that check? And so in all of those questions as you grapple with, there's this immense pressure of, I've got to figure it out. Well, I've got a secret that I want to tell you. All. Most people probably won't tell you the secret. Is that I am 51 years old, and I don't think I fully figured it out yet. And I'm saying this, and I think most of our, your parents will tell you this, that part of what we have to really understand is that life in itself is a journey. That part of what you will experience will be hills and valleys, right? That part of allowing yourself to have the full human experience, that means sometimes you're going to fail. And it is literally some of the greatest lessons I've ever learned in my life came and resulted from me failing and learning and adjusting and literally seeing myself evolving as a human being. And so I say this to you because there are going to be moments that you're going to think that I've got to get it perfect. I've got to make sure that I find the right job, that I've got to make sure that I say yes to the right company. I've got to make sure that I go to the right graduate school. I've got to make sure that I marry the right person. Well, that's pretty important. So <laughs> that, is, that is super important. But in all of those things, right, you have the right to fully be human. And as you are being human, that is you stand in the space of recognizing, yes, it is very important that we plan the objectives and the goals that you want for your future. It is extremely important that you reflect on the past and reflect on your experience here at the college. But what is most important is that you live in the present moment. That you take this moment right now, that as you all are sitting in those seats, right now, this moment right now will be a moment that you will never forget. And I want you to take the time that as you look, just take a moment and look around at your peers. And I want you to congratulate them. This is, I will say this to you, that you all are a remarkable, a remarkable generation that part of what I am learning every single day in working particularly with young people, that what I am learning is that you all are testing the boundaries, that you are forcing everything to shift and change because you are not afraid of innovation. You are not afraid of creativity. You are not afraid of making people do right. And as a result of that, the world is going to change and it's going to shift. But the change is not, I want you to recognize that the change is not just outside ourselves. The change actually starts with us. And so that if we want a better world, then that means we're going to have to hold ourselves at a standard. That how can we be at a higher level? How can we literally take our thinking at a higher level? How can we literally be able to demonstrate that which what we want? If we want to make sure that we see a world that is kinder, then how are we literally showing up in a way that we are kind? If we want to be in a world that we actually see forgiveness, then how are we dealing with the issue of forgiveness? If we want to see a world that is tolerant to those things that we actually love, then how are you doing in the space of what you are tolerating? or how you have a tolerance and build a tolerance for others. And so I say that because part of what we have to really recognize is that the change we want to see, we're literally a demonstration of that for ourselves. We're our first teacher. We're our first leader in that space. And so as you think about how you go forward, you know, oftentimes I say, 
I do a lot of political work. People know me primarily because of a lot of the political work that I do, particularly in the South. And a lot of times when I'm talking to folks, they were like, yes, you're fighting for democracy and that's how we're going to change the world. And believe it or not, my end goal is not about, literally, my end goal is not about democracy. My end goal is how can I advance humanity? Because at the end of the day, what I want to see is I want to see a certain kind of world that actually embraces and centers human life, that centers humanity, that when people go to work, they make the kind of wages that literally they can take care of themselves and their family. That when every single human being has access to adequate and quality housing, that I want to make sure that children have access to quality education, not based on their zip code, but based on the fact that they are children. But in order for that world to come into being, it is going to require you not just to show up for a job, not just to get a paycheck, not just to make friends, you're going to have to be visionaries. You're going to have to not think of yourselves as a citizen of America. You're going to start having to think, think of yourselves as founders of a new America. And in being founders of a new America, that means that you're going to have to deep dig. You're going to have to deep and dig deep in your spirit around what will the world look like that all human beings are valued and respected. And you're going to have to literally stand in that space to make that be. And so there are four pieces that I want to say that I share when I'm thinking about my lessons around what are some lessons around going forward that I've learned and I'm still learning that I could share with you. And the first one that I want to last is literally around this concept of giving each other grace and space. That part of what I see oftentimes is that we literally decide that because you think differently than I, then you are my enemy. And so I have the right to destroy you or to not acknowledge your humanity. And I often say that I don't think America's problem is that we don't know how to get along. America's problem is we do not know how to differ and also embrace and hold each other's humanity. The bottom line is we're all different. I even say my own opinion. Listen, you all, I changed my own beliefs on certain things in a whole week, I'm like, well, I don't know if I believe that again, right? So if I literally give myself the space to be able to adapt and change and evolve, we also have to give each other that space to do that. And so I'm gonna ask you not only to give each other space, but you will remember this, to give yourself some grace and space to learn, to figure it out, to make mistakes, to go forward, to create a vision that is so grand that you are afraid of it. And when we talk about courage, courage is not the one that you're saying, well, I'm courageous because I just go forward with it. You know what is required in courage? Fear. Courage is when there's a presence of fear and you're able to elevate and move beyond that and go forward. So I'm gonna tell you in this moment, take this day to celebrate and stand in the space and you have to look at using your courage and look at fear as fear is the indicator that I've got to tap into my courage in this moment. And as you go forward in your life, if you remember that, that whenever I'm afraid, there's an opportunity for courage to stand in. There's an opportunity for me to build that muscle of having courage. There's an opportunity for me to rise upon this moment and literally go into a space that maybe I've never seen before, maybe I've never felt before, but what I know is that I am going into a higher space and that's a greater opportunity for me. Yeah. The four things that I'll leave you with is going back to the first. It is gonna be important that in this moment, the reason why I really think this is one of the most important moments in my entire life, because in this moment, everything is resettling. We're in this moment that it seems like it's politically divisive. We're in this moment that everything is a changing, that even as, uh, as it related to the pandemic, we're trying to figure out new ways of being. Technology is moving fast. We've got social media. We've got all of these new things that actually can give us a sense of not feeling grounded. But they also create an opportunity because what I will tell you, I always use this diamond theory, that pressure can do two things. Pressure can either destroy you 
or it can transform you. And all a diamond is, is a piece of coal under extreme pressure that transforms and becomes a diamond. And so in that space, I want each and every one of you to see the diamond within. That this is a moment for you literally to vision, to use your opportunity, to use your space, to think about and radically reimagine something that is greater, that is greater that you've seen that your parents have experienced. Because many of you that are sitting in those seats, you are a vision of generations before you that didn't have the opportunity, that didn't have the resources, that didn't even literally know how to read or write. But you are their hope and you are a vision from your family. And so having your vision, using this moment to lift your voice, that this isn't a moment for us to be silent and to be quiet. You have the opportunity to put us on a trajectory of how will this nation move forward? Will we be a nation that literally, as you're looking at your classmates, that is reflective that every single person, no matter where they live, where they come from, wherever their origin, that their humanity is respected? Because what I believe, it is not our politics that are going to change us. It's not our politics that are going to save us. It will be our humanity that actually saves us. And so in this space, what I say to you is to lean into that what you feel that is hard for you to put in words, that when you're feeling something that is moving you to speak against something, to speak for something, stand in that space, stand in your humanity because we need you. And that when I ask you the last two things that I'll say that I think is really important for us to really root everything that we're doing in our values. That what is it that you value? What is it that you care about? What is it that you're passionate about? And the last thing is really around how we see victory. I want you all to really shift your paradigm of how you see victory. Yes, some of us will see victory as when we land that fantastic six-figure job. Yes, that's going to be great, and that's going to be worth celebrating. I'm telling you that. We also see victory of when we find that life partner or the love of our life. We'll see victory in all of these things. But I also wanted you to recognize that even your very presence, you know, when at the point of conception, there's over a billion sperm that are trying to make it to one egg. <laughs> Literally. Now, half of them are not smart enough to even make it to the route. <laughs> the other half is not really, a, a, a sizable majority of those are not even strong enough or to penetrate the egg. And what's so interesting and so smart about the egg, ladies, is that it will only accept one sperm, even if it splits into twins or triplets. It only is extremely, extremely selective. That means every single one of you, you were selected. That at some point, you were the strongest, you were the smartest, and you in fact were selected. Now I didn't say you were playing. <laughs> But in fact, you were. And so I'm raising that because any moment that you are doubting yourself or you're doubting how you go forward, I want you to remember that your very presence, that who you are and your humanity says that you are deserving, that you are deserving to be respected with dignity and respect. It says that you are deserving to have a life and a quality of life that you can take care of yourself and your children. And in all of that, remember, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Go into the world, graduates, and let your light shine. Thank you.